Big tech is ramping up the war on conservative thought ahead of 2020. Well, what's their true goal? Blunting Trump's digital momentum, it's obvious. Google and YouTube took down 300 Trump campaign ads claiming that they violated company policy. But here's what 60 Minutes discovered. There are ads of President Trump that were not approved to run on Google or YouTube. They're available in our transparency report. Google keeps an archive of political ads. Over 300 videos were taken down, mostly over the summer. But the archive doesn't detail what rules they violated. There's no transparency in the transparency report. Oh, what a shock. No transparency from Google over what rules were even violated? Does this all sound eerily familiar? Yeah, of course it does. The fact of the matter is, this was all done just to hurt Trump. Google is pulling powerful targeting tools that the Trump team has used with great success. And by changing those rules, they're putting their thumb on the scale of a presidential election. Joining me now, Dr. Robert Epstein, senior research psychologist who has studied Google, and Harmeet Dillon, who's represented many tech whistleblowers. She's also a Trump 2020 campaign advisory board member. Dr. Epstein, let's start with you. You said that while the number of ads, 300, might not seem like a lot, I mean, it seems like a lot to me, but I guess to people who uh, specialize in this, not a lot. Why is this very significant, nevertheless? It's extremely uh, significant, Laura, because, uh, first of all, the problem is much larger than, uh, than you think. It's not just those 300 ads. Uh, Google has acknowledged in the last few months actually taking down on YouTube 17,000 channels, more than 100,000 videos, and more than 500 million comments on YouTube. Uh, so if you th if you think of the power they have to suppress content, to censor, uh, and with us not knowing what it is they're suppressing, they pose a very serious threat to the free and fair election. Harmi, you've said uh, repeatedly that this is not just a way for Google to kind of clean up the, the way the entire platform operates or to restore integrity or truthfulness to the platform. This is all about circumscribing, limiting conservative speech. I've represented several clients who have been subject to the censorship and uh, whistleblowers inside the company who have described the tools of censorship that they use. And so this 300 ads, as you said, may seem insignificant, but what it signifies, as all censorship does, is that if somebody doesn't toe the line of unwritten rules, they will be punished. The Trump campaign was very successful using targeting and other tools that are openly available and that Google still allows in the non-political context in 2016. And the fact that they've abruptly changed these rules recently to I take mean, away those so micro-targeting yeah. is obvious. Oh, I mean, Dr. Epstein, here's what I love about this, okay? We have all of these, quote, liberals. I, and it, when I grew up, liberals meant free speech. You're not for limiting speech, even when it's inconvenient or speech you, you abhor. But now we have a lot of, of so-called liberals who are fine with limiting speech under the guise of, of oh, we, want, we only want truthful ads. I'm certainly not a conservative or a Trump supporter, but I've been speaking out on these issues because I've been doing research uh, on the power that Google and other ha uh, companies have to shift opinions and votes uh, for more than six years now. And the power they have is unbelievable. And generally speaking, there are they're no limits big. on what they can do. Yeah, and, they're too uh, big. You know, they, can, they can shift 15 million votes in 2020 with no one knowing that they're doing it and without leaving a paper trail for authorities to trace. But, uh, Harmeet, isn't, isn't that what, again, I go back to liberals. Dr. Epstein is not political, but he sees the power in the sheer size and reach and, and monetary uh, platform, uh, monetary uh, control that Google has. But, w yeah. I mean, he's right about this, though. Why, why should a, a, a company decide what is true and false when it comes to this type of political speech? When these companies put together control the digital advertising market, uh, there is a monopoly situation, a duopoly situation. The United States Department of Justice really needs to step in and accelerate their efforts here because we will lose our speech. Now, this type of thing is common in China, where Google and probably Facebook are trying to expand their reach. It's not common in America yet, and it should never be allowed here. And so we really need to be vigilant about this, regardless of whose speech is being censored, Laura. 
Well, you know, I set up monitoring systems in uh, both 2016 and 2018 to see whether there was any political bias in Google search results. Uh, there was substantial political bias, uh, left-leaning, all liberal, uh, in both elections, enough to have shifted at least 2.6 million votes to Hillary Clinton in 2016. Uh, and in 2018, enough to have shifted upwards of 78.2 million votes to Democrats nationwide. Now, that's spread across many elections. Uh, but the point is, you know, that bias is there. And I think, frankly, if we don't have a big monitoring system in place,